Okay, so here we are. These are the patch notes for, well, yesterday, <laughs> last night. I was distract. I am sorry. Uh, but yeah, big patch with a couple of pretty big and kind of surprising reworks. So let's dive into it. Uh, AI improvements and Mac compatibility. That's always good. But yeah, we've got changes to Abathur, Anna, Regar, and Whitemain. Uh, mostly Abathur and Anna. So with Abathur, <clears throat> uh, his symbiote ability, Carapace, the cooldown has gone down by half from 12 to 6 seconds. The duration is reduced from 8 to 6 seconds. The shield will persist after the symbiote ends. So you can just leave the shield on like, uh, well, it would only last for 6 seconds unless there's the talent that still makes it permanent. I guess we'll find out. Um, and an additional functionality, it heals allied heroes for 22 health per second while Carapace is active. So I guess you could like just jump onto someone, you could drop the shield on them, and you can like leave just de-symbiote on them if you want to. Uh, and prepare to symbiote onto someone else. Uh, and they'll still have the shield and they'll still be getting he uh, healing from it so long as the shield's still there uh, for those 6 seconds that it's up for. So that's kind of neat. Uh, his trait got a pretty significant change. They radically reduced the duration of the trait, um, but they bumped up the damage a lot. Like, that's about 20% more damage, a little under 20% um, additional damage on the Locust, which is a big deal. I feel like one of the problems with Apather was that um, the Locust, they didn't really feel like they did anything too significant. And in order to make them more of a threat, you would have to go, like, all in on all of the Locust talents. And by doing that, you made your team fighting terrible. So, you know, it just wasn't viable at higher levels, right? Because um, people could, would, you know, they'd respond to the Locust very easily. And just the loss of team fighting power that it gave you, it just made it really rough. Um, I think this is more interesting, having them be actually meaningful. But it depends very much on where Abathur is located, because he has to be closer to the, the structures that he's trying to push. So there's that counterplay built in, but it still feels like it's a meaningful play for the Abathur to take that risk. So it's higher risk, but higher reward. I think that's good. Evolve Monstrosity no longer takes half damage from non-heroic enemies. Uh, now shows a warning indicator where it's going to burrow to, and it now has the ability to deep tunnel every 80 seconds. So that makes this a lot better, I would say. Um, just straight from level 10, you know, just the ability to rotate around, kind of be like a Dahaka, I guess, uh, during like a, a split soaking Dahaka during, um, during an objective, I think it's pretty intriguing. Um, though obviously it's going to die, uh, quite a lot faster. I will need more babysitting, but I think that's a pretty interesting idea. We'll see how it turns out. I mean, in like the new meta of the game, which is kind of more fun focused, I'd say this could be pretty good. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, talents have changed a lot. Um, in fact, we can hop into the game here. Where are we? Here we are. So, let me see if I can just set it to tab back and forth. There we are. Perfect. Okay, great. Uh, so level one, survival instincts has been changed. Locust health increased by 40% and damage by 40%. So those locusts are really going to hit hard. That's like, so let's say roughly 20% more damage is baseline and then an additional 40% over that. So that's pretty... Insanely powerful talent from the looks of it. Uh, reinforced Carapace increases the shield of Carapace by 40%. Um, regenerative Microbes, the healing with the shield is gone. Uh, and yeah, that's what level 1 is looking like. You still have the nests. Level 4, Ballista Spores, which is the long range uh, mines are gone. Sustained Carapace is gone. A Needle Spine is there from level 7. So instead we have uh, Symbiote. Heroic Symbiote Hosts gained 25% attack speed. I don't know if that was always there. Probably. Uh, needle Spine is now there. More damage and range on Stab. And then Prolific Dispersal. So more charges and reducing the cooldown and Toxic Nest. So I guess it sort of depends on your composition. I mean, if you got someone that benefits from Adrenal, I think that's pretty good. Uh, prolific Dispersal otherwise looks pretty good for map control, but that should be an interesting one. Mule, hilariously still there. That is right. That is right. The man, the genetic engineering mastermind behind the Zerg Swarm... Brings down Terran mules to repair structures. That's right. It's still there. Okay, cool. <laughs> they couldn't have come up with, like... I guess they didn't have the resources anymore, like, to, to be like, okay, well, we'll keep the functionality, but we'll, you know, make it like a, a Zerg-themed thing. Nah, it's just, it's just the mule. You know, it's just a Terran move. Who cares? So it heals more, does it? Oh, no, it heals less. So it doesn't heal as much anymore. Okay, so mule's been a bit nerfed. You got file nests. 
a networked carapace. It applies an untalented carapace shield to all nearby allied heroes, minions, and mercenaries. Uh, so again, presumably that shield will still be there after you cancel your symbiote, at least for the six seconds that it lasts. And it will be healing all of them. So I guess like this just got baseline buffed because, you know, without taking other shield talents, it's still... Well, actually, there's no talents, but the baseline shield is just pretty good now. So um, that's actually pretty decent, I would think. Uh, obviously, Evolve Monstrosity. He's got this thing, level 13. Assault Strain is gone. Bombard Strain is different now. Bombard. Okay, Locusts become long range. They have long range siege attacks, and they last 50% longer. 50% longer. So now they last for 16 seconds, 24. So they that makes them last as long as they used to before. Well, just like one second less, 24 seconds. Um, pretty powerful thing, of course. It means that the locusts, which are obviously, if you take survival instincts, gonna be doing a lot of damage uh, from the start, but by being long range, they'll be alive more. Um, yeah, I don't know if it splashes, I can't remember. It's been so long since I've paid proper attention to this talent. But they'll go much further, so that's pretty good. Uh, I'd say if you're taking Survival Instincts, that's almost a must-pick. Some with Transference, I think they're still the same. Yeah, so that's still like a nice heal for whoever has your Symbiote. And, uh, I mean, Spatial Efficiency isn't too bad either for a bit more single target focus damage. Um, yeah, cool. Okay, level 16 then, Volatile Mutation. Okay, so this got changed. Ultimate Evolution Clones and Monstrosities do damage to nearby enemies every three seconds, and when they die, enemy heroes hit, heal the clone or monstrosity for half of the damage dealt. So that's new. So they heal for half of the damage dealt. That's pretty interesting. So making your clone or your monstrosity a lot more powerful. Hmm. Especially and making them much better team fights. That's a pretty interesting one. You still have the spike burst slowing people. You have the movement speed buff from that. And, uh, yeah, spawning three locusts. Then level 20. Evolutionary link. Increases the duration of ultimate evolution. Ooh, by 50%. So the clone lasts a lot longer. And the original target of the clone gets a shield for 25 of the max health. Refresh every five seconds. So instead of lasting 20 seconds, now it's going to last 30. And keep giving that person a shield every five seconds. I think that becomes extremely powerful, actually. That becomes very good. Like, you know, a gray main or like a Jaina with that could be very very scary like those really powerful clone targets that's pretty interesting uh, or illidan as well you know all those yeah that becomes very good i would think evolution complete no longer gives the monstrosity the ability to deep tunnel increases their base basic attack by a hundred percent there's double basic attack damage for the monstrosity evolution complete that's pretty cool as well so obviously at level 20 hive mind is ridiculously strong it just you know it mimics your symbiote. It may basically makes your symbiote essentially 50% better, which is extremely good. It also would apply talented things like the, you know, movement speed to two people, I do believe. All that sort of stuff. So it was extremely powerful. I think, you know, it would have the uh, attack speed buff on two people, that sort of stuff. One of the most powerful level 20s in the game in practice. So they've, like, really upped the two of these to kind of compete with that. You still have locust nests. It's okay. I, I would suspect that even with the Locust build, though, I would be kind of shocked if that was anywhere near as good as these other things. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you could have Locust Nest, but you could just have your Monstrosity do double damage. You could just have your Evolutionary Link, you know, just make your clone way better and stuff. So I kind of feel like Locust Nest is maybe a little bit left behind. Um, I mean, they could easily probably merge Locust Nest with Locust Brood or something like that, but... I guess it'd be fun to have a locust only build, but that'd be my thoughts on that. Um, so yeah, changes to Abathur. It's cool. I'm missing my chat. Where's my chat window? There's a new Abathur skin, red pajamas. Okay. Uh, Anna, heal. The healing on her heal dart is down uh, by a good bit, actually. Uh, you know, 10, less healing, just baseline. Obviously, that scales over the course of the game. Uh, Shrike, her trait, new active, aim down sights. I mean, it's the game, boy. I don't know if we're going to get a game here, by the way. People watching live. Um, 1 p.m. Irish time. Everyone in America is asleep right now. So, Shrike. Placeholder. So, it still applies the doses. There we go. Uh, aim down sights. Active. Doesn't give sight or attack range. Cool down. 
Okay, so... Increases the range of healing dart and sleep dart by 25% and lets them pierce one hero, but reduces her movement speed. Okay, that's pretty incredible. So that's a massive change to how the hero plays. That you can activate her trait. You can switch between the modes every four seconds. It gives her a big slow, 25% slow, but it makes her healing dart pierce and it makes her sleep dart pierce. So, obviously, going into a team fight, then, you turn Shrike on, you turn Aim Down Sights on, it's going to really increase the amount of healing and team fight control that she brings to the Sleep Darts very powerfully, but she becomes extremely vulnerable herself. Um, that is a massive deal, and that's pretty interesting. Eye of Horus, heals reduced a lot, damage reduced a lot. Now, Oh, shots now pierce all targets, but still impact and cease on structures. Well, that's also, that becomes then very good, too, in terms of team fighting. You could heal or damage multiple people. Um, yeah, I mean, like, so long as you're hitting two targets, you know, you're getting more value than, like, significantly more value than you were before. Um, so that's pretty insane. What's the level 20 of that do, I wonder? Does this sell everything, every hit explodes or whatever it used to do? Uh, level 1 is now radically different in terms of talents. Uh, contact healing from level 16. Biotic grenade heals for more per allied and enemy hero hits. Okay, cool. Um, slumber shells is everything is gone. <laughs> okay, uh, gain twenty five percent movement speed while an enemy is affected by sleep dart. I wonder if that stacks. I wonder if you could get sleep two targets, get fifty percent movement speed. So I guess you go from like seventy five percent movement speed. I don't know how exactly all this stuff would stack together to like well plus half would be like thirty eight or something like that. So you'd be up at like a hundred and eight percent move speed. If you hit two targets with this, but I don't know how it all stacks together, but interesting idea, I guess. Vampiric rounds. Uh, quest. Stack five doses on an enemy hero. Increases Shrike's healing by an additional 1.5%. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Wow. Okay. Level one. Huh. Not as good as it was before, uh, which is probably good. But maybe some interesting choices there. We'll see. Uh, over here, level four. Airstrike is gone. Aim down sights is now a trait. Debilitating darts from seven. So fire a dart. 20 second cooldown. Uh, slows the movement speed and reduces the damage of the first enemy hero it hits by 50% for three seconds. That's obviously very good. So that could be very strong at level four. Uh, new talent, biotic enhancements. Increases the bonus healing duration of biotic grenade by 50% and reduces its cooldown by four seconds. So they got rid of airstrike and they just made this thing. Um, which is also very good. She just keeps talking here. She does not care. Uh, and then we still have overdose. So hitting heroes at sleep dart supplies three doses. Your sleep is piercing by default from level one with your new shrike thing. Um, yeah, okay. Not bad. I mean, I would say that... Um, I mean, healing grenades, that would make it a 12 second cooldown. And give them six seconds of bonus healing. I feel like... Biotic Enhancement seems really good. Yeah, Debilitating Dart 2. I'm not so sure about this one, but we'll see what these get here. Temporary Blindness is gone. Anti-Healer. Ooh. Increases the area of bi Biotic Grenade by 100%. On the duration of the healing reduction by 25%. <sighs> okay. Uh, so from 2 seconds, 25% to 2.5 seconds. This is much better than a command. Okay. I mean, double area, double area though. I mean, uh, honestly, honestly, the grenade build starts to look really good. Grenade build looks really good with like piercing heals going through people being boosted by that. That seems real good. Night terrors. Uh, upon waking, enemy heroes take 8% of their maximum health and damage. If a hero is not woken up early, set the cooldown of sleep dart to 6 seconds. Never What's it, like, 14 seconds by default? Get 8 second cooldown off? Wow. Okay, Jesus. So level 7 is, like, ma and then Mind Numbing Agent, which is still insanely good. So level 7 is, like, the big defining Ana talent tier. then. It's, like, double area biotic grenade. Your sleep darts just chunking people in terms of damage. Or just massively nerfing people's spell power. That's interesting, for sure. Okay. Uh, level 13 looks like it's the same, so still like the altering your, your you know, your healing darts. Um, yeah, cool. Kind of depends on the comp. Level 16 is all healing dart stuff. 
New talents, active reload. Okay, so you got sharpshooter. So hitting consecutive healing darts increases the bonus. Concentrated doses, heals more per dose. And then active reload, 60 second cooldown. Activate to instantly gain three charges of healing dart. So you can just like spam those out for some burst healing. Hmm, interesting. So I mean, I think these are all pretty good. Uh, then level 20 is totally different. Wowie, okay. So new talent, Dead Eye. Increases Eye of Horus' healing and damage by 4% for every hero hit. This bonus resets after all shots have been fired. Ooh. You get six rounds. And if you're piercing through multiple people on the team and on the enemy team, this could do crazy stuff. Oh, wow. You could make some big plays with this. Just be like, that's like, fuck your grenade in there. Run backwards and then just blast with the... Okay, that's kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. That's pretty cool. Armored stance increases Shrike's damage by 50%. While aim down sights is active, gain 25 armor. That's very, very good too. 25 armor is a significant uh, self survivability increase. And Shrike doing more damage obviously goes well with any dose builds. Um, I'm going to heal her more, so it makes Ana probably a lot more survivable. Dynamic optics. Basic attacks increase attack speed by 10% for 3 seconds, up to 100%. While aim down sights is active, increase your basic attack range by 4. Much better than a thing on the beach. Yeah, cabana on the beach. Huh? Yeah, okay, cool. Interesting stuff with Ana. I mean, like, initial thoughts are that, uh, like, the grenade stuff seems in, uh, very, very good. Um, you know, I think Eye of Horus, the new Eye of Horus with Deadeye, seems incredibly good. Uh, got great potential. And I think that's nice. Um, in incredible global potential, even as well. Um, so she's not just going to be like this nano boost bot anymore. Like Eye of Horus is going to be like an actual genuinely good pick. Um, yeah, and the new Shrike, like her gameplay is going to be much different. Like you're going to play Ana a lot differently from before uh, because of, of this new like aim down sights baseline. You know, more range and piercing on your darts, your healing and sleep darts, but your movement speed is is quite reduced. Yeah, Ana should be pretty pretty dope with this these changes. Holy shit, quest revolution. I do think they've improved that, getting rid of some of those quests. Like, hitting enemy heroes with your grenades to stack the quests was weird and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, piercing darts. Yeah, I think it's good. I, I think it is good. I think, you know, that the old talents encouraged a weird play style, so I think that's improved. Uh, Regar can now self-cast Ancestral Healing. <laughs> nice. And White Mane, the mana return on High Inquisitor, has been reduced from 75 to 50. So I always thought this was too strong, and then they buffed it even. I think this nerf is probably appropriate. Makes mana more of an actual concern for white main, which is what it should be. That's a good change overall. And Regar self ancestral. This to me opens up some interesting possibilities on like a much more aggressive Regar, who's gonna more so heal himself. It obviously gives more value to the idea of like those more aggressive things like going in with Hunger of the Wolf. Um, just being a more aggro player yourself. And it could Maybe, maybe solo lane Regar? Possibly. It could happen. It could happen. Like, solo lane Regar could be a thing. Like, Feral Heart. You know? Blood and Thunder. Self Ancestral. Uh, who knows? We, we're gonna have to try that too. We're gonna have to try that too. If we ever get a game, who knows? Um, we got bundles are there. New skins. I think I took a look at those already. Got the new mounts. Oh, Flirty Cloud. Oh, I missed that. A Flirty Cloud. Where's the... Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> That's the patch notes. <laughs>